We like them in that episode of South Park. You guys think about that big chunk of protein mix you thought was properly mixed up in the drink, but it actually wasn't? Oh, it almost gagged. What's going on, everyone? I am looking pretty rough. It's very early in the morning. We're going to test something that AMD said we shouldn't be able to test, and that is the latest PCIe Gen 4 M.2 NVMe drives. This one in particular is the MP600 from Corsair. It's the one we tested uh, earlier. We've built with one as well. We can see speeds of upwards of 5,000 megabytes per second reads and about 4,200 sequential writes. Uh, so that's really nice and all when you're using the CPU lanes, but we have not tested this drive on a B450 board. And we haven't even tested it on an X470 board, so I'm not sure how this is gonna work. But Asus tells us that this particular board, and this is, look, it's a tough gaming board. It's not a really expensive B450 board. You can find this in the description if you're interested in checking it out. But we're going to test Asus's claim, or at least their underlying assumption about this board being able to support PCIe Gen 4 drives. If we can get somewhere in the realm of 4,000, anything over Gen 3 speeds, I will be satisfied. So let's get started. You can see I've already got the drive in here. I've got the stock Corsair heatsink here just to eliminate the possible variable of thermal throttling. These drives do get very hot when they are running at full speed. So, or I should say when they're writing or reading large chunks of data at a time. So uh, we're going to install an operating system on this and then we will go straight into uh, Crystal Disk Mark and test out those speeds. Now I'm going to update the BIOS first. To be on the safe side, I'm not sure what BIOS revision this board is currently running. This was literally sent last week, so for all I know, this is running like the original BIOS when this board first launched a year ago. Uh, so we're going to update that to the latest BIOS. Uh, that should include Zen 2 CPU support, and I would also expect one of those updates uh, to include PCIe Gen 4 uh, support, uh, assuming that this board even supports it. So yeah, we'll find that out right now. If you're rocking the Windows 10 operating system and haven't activated your copy, click the link below and purchase an OEM license from SCD Key. Then click here, 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 and then here. Paste your activation key and you'll have a fully activated OS in seconds. And be sure to use my offer code SStudio for an 18% discount on your order. So I wanted a baseline before we did anything else. You can see this is a test system here, GTX 1070, 2700X. Uh, this is the uh, Wraith Prism cooler here, and then 16 gigs of Corsair memory, pretty straightforward. Of course, the uh, the B450 Plus gaming motherboard. And speeds are pretty much capped out for our MP600 at the Gen 3 uh, limit, right? So about 3,500 megabytes per second reads and writes sequential. So we don't really, I mean, this is what I expected pre-BIOS update, right? So you could still buy a Gen 4 drive and get Gen 3 speeds. Just because it's a Gen 4 optimized drive does not mean you can't use it in a board that only supports uh, Gen 3. So um, I wanted to clear that up in case you were wondering, but you certainly want to be able to reap the benefits of a Gen 4 drive if you pay the premium for Gen 4 uh, right out of the gate. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to try to update the BIOS. Uh, they do have a BIOS revision for this that supports the latest Zen processors and a few Agasa updates as well. So you can see here how Asus has their Easy Flash 3 utility. This, I assume, is for flashing a new BIOS. There you go. Um, <laughs> Pull the camera down just a bit and uh, so we're going to get the option here to install from a storage device and that's where we have it saved and then we want to find the actual file to dot cap file that's this one do you want to read it it'll confirm that it's a compatible bios and there we go that's the version number Let's go. Now, while this is installing, do not touch it. Do not power off the system. It will reboot on its own probably more than once to train memory and other things because it's going to treat this like a first time boot, right? It's a fresh BIOS input output system. It's going to confirm that all the components, all the external devices are working properly again. And without that, if it's corrupted, if you shut it off before it has fully flashed, then uh, you'll end up with a brick system and you'll have to replace the BIOS chip and that's going to be a pain to track down. So yeah, just go get yourself a glass of water, come back in a few minutes, and you should be hunky-dory. Now that's what I'm talking about. So about 5,000 megabytes per second reads, 4,300 sequential writes, and this is about where I'd expect an MP600 to fall in line. This is the one terabyte drive, I didn't say that earlier, and I tested this previously on an X570 board with a Zen 2 chip, and we got about the same reads and writes. You can see those here, so I would say this is within the margin of error. Now I'm going to test long-term uh, stability with this drive on the B450 chipset. Obviously, it's going to take a lot longer than one or 
or two days worth of testing uh, because I'm going to be transferring huge files over long periods of time. I will report back on Twitter. Follow me there if you guys want an update. But the good thing is, this does work. Uh, some boards support it, some, board do, some boards don't. Um, the tough B450 Plus gaming certainly does. Not the best power delivery for the CPU. This, this is not really a, a stellar overclocking board by any means, but the fact that you can get Gen 4 speeds in a 100-ish US dollar motherboard is pretty awesome, and I have a feeling AMD feels some kind of way about that. In fact, AMD has expressed in the past public dissatisfaction with the fact that motherboard vendors have at times promoted some of their lower end chipset boards, like this tough B450 board here, as supporting PCI 4 natively. AMD says that because traces were not built into all of these boards for the PCI 4 standard, that you shouldn't be able to advertise it as supporting it because it's not technically guaranteed and the hardware baked inside, the traces themselves, are not technically supposed to support Gen 4, even though we proved, at least in a short spurt, that it does right here. In fact, there have even been talks about AMD trying to push backdoor updates to block PCI 4 through a GESA uh, updates, and that would be rolled out in, a, in the form of a BIOS update. So, if you're constantly updating your BIOS, which I kind of don't blame you for because, especially lately with all the boost issues uh, that, have, that have come to light, actually we've noticed this since the very beginning, but now AMD is finally acknowledging them and apparently they're going to be pushing those updates out soon, you, there's a slight possibility you might see Gen 4 blocked in those updates, especially if you're using an X470 or B450 board. Obviously not an X570 where Gen 4 is standard, but in the older chipsets. So if you're already rocking a BIOS that has Gen 4 baked in and you're running just fine, you don't really see an issue with the boost frequencies you're experiencing, then I wouldn't update anymore just to be on the safe side, especially if you have a Gen 4 drive and you want to take advantage of these insanely fast reads and writes. So very cool that we could get this to work on a B450 board. Now I want to speak a little more to the concern some of you have about uh, supposedly AMD trying to take away this, this ability for older chipsets. I want to make something very clear up front. The reason why AMD is concerned about motherboard vendors advertising PCI Gen 4 support in older chipsets is because it isn't guaranteed. And again, we'll have to do extensive long-term testing to verify that uh, that the traces are short enough and consistent enough to, to maintain PCI 4 speeds because if you don't get them when they're advertised, that could be bad news for both the motherboard vendors and AMD because Right now, Zen 2 chips are the only chips that support the PCI Gen 4 interface. So, uh, this is more or less AMD trying to cover their own butts, and I don't blame them. And I think it gets really dicey when motherboard vendors say, yeah, if you buy this board, you'll get Gen 4 support, even though we didn't initially make this board to support Gen 4, it just so happens that it works. You could argue that some of the X470 boards were. Obviously, uh, especially the higher end, like Gigabyte and Asus boards, those definitely have the traces. But some of the other boards, I mean, the issue is you have to cherry pick. Certain boards, certain manufacturers have those traces where they should be and, and have the bandwidth to support PCI 4, but other boards don't necessarily have a feeling this is one of those, especially being this is a, a cheaper B450 board. Just because it works, you know, it's sequential reads and writes in 3D uh, Crystal Dismark, that doesn't mean that this is, these are the kinds of speeds you should expect for every test that you run, for every file transfer that takes place. And that's the issue, because legally, this is difficult for motherboard vendors to uphold. Now, I mean, let's be honest, how many people are going to pair a two, three, four hundred dollar M.2 drive like this with a one hundred dollar motherboard? I think the applications in this case are rather impractical. However, we proved at least that it could be done. Uh, and I, I know I'm not the first to do this, uh, but I, I wanted to see it for myself. And it's pretty incredible. I mean, I think it's a testament to the socket. It, you know, the AM4 platform is very versatile. Uh, and as long as you're using a Zen 2 drive, which you can use with a B450 board, heck, even a B350 board, but we're talking B450 for, for uh, PCI 4, um, the fact that we can take advantage of this, seeing as though the motherboard was manufactured before PCI Gen 4 was even released, uh, I think that is pretty incredible. What do you guys think down below? Leave your comments, suggestions for future videos. All of that is appreciated. Click that red subscribe button if you haven't already. Become a member if you're feeling especially fancy, and I will catch you in the next one. You guys have been awesome. This is Science Studio. Thanks for learning with us.